Oh, what a lively bunch of people we have here in our theater. We are so happy to have them and you. Now, let me let you know, I have never really kept up with the Kardashians, but when Kim Kardashian West, that's her name now, when she showed up in the West Wing, by the way, it was not named after her husband, Kanye West, <laughs> but I took note because she was there to discuss some real problems in our criminal justice system. Now, I doubt she's a policy expert, but if her celebrity can be helpful in bringing attention to reforming a system that sometimes puts a person in prison for life for three relatively small thefts, then God bless her. It's an issue that's close to my heart because for the almost 11 years that I was a governor, there wasn't a day when I didn't deal with prisons, inmates, clemency requests, sentencing issues are some other aspect of our criminal justice system. The issue might be a request to issue a pardon to somebody who was 40 years old, but who at 17 was a mere passenger in a stolen car. And while he never even went to prison, the felony conviction meant that he couldn't even get a job emptying a bedpan in a nursing home because he couldn't clear a background check. It could be the signing, the warrant, and issuing the command to carry out an execution. But changes are needed in the system. A couple of decades ago, a popular policy was three strikes and you're out. And that meant a life sentence for three thefts of $400. All the while, some murder sentences were only seven years. Now, saying tough on crime was an applause line in a campaign speech. But many applauding didn't realize they were supporting a policy that really doesn't make sense. As Larry Norris, who headed our correction system for me, often said, we lock people up that we're mad at rather than the ones we are afraid of. It meant that some nonviolent offenders of sometimes minor crimes were warehoused in the very expensive prison system while we let some other guilty of violent offenses back to the streets to maim and kill again. Don't know if you know this, but did you know it costs more money to put a person in prison for a year? than to put a person in college and pay full tuition, room and board, buy books, even provide spending money. And it costs more than it would to provide mental health needs for many people who are locked up without any treatment for what landed them there in the first place. You see, we can educate, medicate, and if necessary, incarcerate. But truth be told, we don't have a crime problem. We have a drug and alcohol problem. Let me tell you a little figure. 88% of the inmates in the Arkansas system were there for a drug or alcohol-related crime. 88%. They committed the crime while they were drunk or high, or they committed the crime to get drunk or high. Some of those folks absolutely are dangerous, and they need to be in prison. But many would do better to be in treatment centers and community restitution centers, which address the root problems and which often cost as little as 10% of the cost of a full-blown lockup. Now, without addressing why people ended up in prison, our correction system is mostly a place where greater criminal skills are learned. And upon release, the inmate who can't find a job ends up committing more elaborate crimes. While the government can't force people into faith-based programs, my own experience was that only the faith-based programs had long-term success rates. Programs like Interchange, which was launched by the late Chuck Colson's group Prison Fellowship, had a less than 20% recidivism rate compared to the more than 80% recidivism of traditional approaches. I once spent a day in the Angola prison in Louisiana. It once was considered the most violent and hopeless institution in all of America. Now it is a model of changing inmate behavior by changing the inmate from the inside out through a process that is all about repentance, forgiveness, restitution, and redemption by faith in God. Some inmates... <laughs> some inmates will never get out because of what they did. But while their bodies may not be freed, their souls have been. So let me say it here. Thanks, Kim Kardashian, for using your notoriety and celebrity for something other than showing us how large your backside is, <laughs> and instead showing us how large your heart is for a system that is terribly broken. Oh, sure. The cynics. 
I know the cynics sneered at your meeting with the president, but I just want you to know I salute you and the president for putting this issue front and center because America can and must do better. And if that means keeping up with the Kardashians, then count me in.